In this video, I'm going to show you an interesting way to use the Logic Vocal Transformer. First, I'm going to play a little bit of the unprocessed track for you. By carefully combining the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics and general relativity, physicists are led to the theory of loop quantum gravity. You can set up the vocal transformer either as a plug-in on the channel strip or on an auxiliary object. I'm going to assign the output of the audio channel to the auxiliary bus and proceed with using the auxiliary object in this case. Moving the pitch knob and adjusting the form and control are very important parts of working with the vocal transformer. I'm going to show you how to control the pitch knob from MIDI keynote and how to use the mod wheel to control the formant knob. When you activate this button here, what it does is it stops all pitch movement and makes everything a monotone. Here's that same example with some pitch and formant control from the MIDI keyboard. In this theory, the allowed quantum states of space are represented by diagrams of lines and nodes called spin networks. Quantum space-time corresponds to similar diagrams called spin foams, in which spin networks evolve over time. Loop quantum gravity predicts that space comes in discrete loops, the smallest of which is about a cubic Planck length, or 10 to the minus 99 cubic centimeters. Time proceeds in discrete ticks of about a Planck time, or 10 to the minus 43 seconds. To access these controls by MIDI, we're going to have to use logic transformer objects in the environment. First, I'm just going to describe the way I've got these transformers set up. Physical input going into a monitor. You can see as I play keys on my MIDI keyboard, the monitor shows note on, note off messages. The note off messages are actually going to cause us a little trouble, as you'll see. I'll show you why. I'm going to bypass this first transformer. So now we have a setup where the note messages are going right into the transformer that I'm going to use to change notes into faders. But watch this. Every time I release my key, the note off message drives a value of A0. That's no good. We don't want the note off message doing anything, so we want to filter out the note off message. Now it's a little known fact that note off messages are the same as a note message with a velocity of 0. So what we're going to do is use a transformer to block note off messages. We double click on the transformer and you can see that I'm using a different mode of operation on the transformer. This mode here allows you to set parameters that you want to block. In our case, notes with velocity zero will be blocked from passing through the chain. Everything that equals a note and has a velocity of zero will be filtered out. Everything else will pass through. Perfect. Okay. Check it out. Note off does not change the pitch knob. Thing of beauty. Messages then proceed onwards to the next transformer. This transformer changes notes into faders. It has to become a channel 2 value because that's the plug-in on the chain. It's receiving on channel 2. As you may recall from an earlier tutorial, this column represents the parameter number. Even though we'll play different notes, the resulting output will still be a 0. And the last thing is this, that what we want is the note value to actually come out as the parameter value. And the way we do that is just click on this little knob here, and you see that it allows you to choose which input data proceeds on to the output data stream. In our case, we want the note value to come out as the parameter value. So this works perfectly. This shows that the note that we play produces a parameter value. Good. This transform is done. I've also added a transformer to change the mod wheel values a little bit. First of all, this transformer will change the mod wheel values into formant values. I'll just put this here so we can see that as I move the mod wheel, you can see that the formant value is changing. So first we produce that by saying everything that equals a controller gets turned into a fader. It's channel 2 to properly address the vocal transformer plugin. Its parameter number is 1. We determined that earlier by moving the knob and watching the values that it produced in a monitor. There we go, channel two, parameter number one. And here, what we're going to do is change the data that the wheel produces. Now, this line here is produced by taking the data, the value of the mod wheel, and doing a little math on it. Here, we're dividing, and we're adjusting the divide number to produce a resultant transformation of the values. So this says that when my mod wheel is at the furthest position upwards, it's producing a value that's actually much lower. So it's basically scaling the range of the output of the values from the mod wheel. Now the only other thing that we've done in this setup is I've created an instrument object so that I can record the MIDI data onto a track. So we just create a new instrument from the environment list of objects. 
wire its output to the aux track and then that instrument becomes available as a choice on your arrange page in Logic. In a related video I discuss how to use the Logic Sculpture Synth as a signal processor. Here's an example of using both the Sculpture Synth and the vocal processor together. Bye for now. By carefully combining the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics and general relativity, physicists are led to the theory of loop quantum gravity. In this theory, the allowed quantum states of space are represented by diagrams of lines and nodes called spin networks. Quantum spacetime corresponds to similar diagrams called spin foams, in which spin networks evolve over time. Loop quantum gravity predicts that space comes in discrete loops, the smallest of which is about a cubic Planck length, or 10 to the minus 99 cubic centimeters. Time proceeds in discrete ticks over the Planck time, or 10 to the minus 43.